Stephen, from Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good <clears throat> to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son. It's uh, not too easy to add anything to this service. The Lord has blessed us so much. Yes. And uh, I sort of feel like anything I have to say is sort of anticlimactic, but, but uh, it could be that God could yes. help me just a few minutes. True. Paul was writing this letter to the Romans, and his purpose, or at least one thing he had in mind, was to bring encouragement to these Christian people who were undergo undergoing persecution. And life was uh, very difficult for most of them. And... Um, they were being forced to uh, stand before rulers and oftentimes were forced to give their lives for Christ if they refused to kneel to the emperor and confess Caesar as Lord. And Paul was trying to give them hope in these, these dark uh, in the dark hours they were yes. facing. And... Um, not writing to people who were without Christ, but writing to people who were, who were converted, people who, who knew Jesus personally. And I think that as we read chapter 8, we, we want to remember that, that he wasn't just writing to anybody, but he was writing to people who knew the Lord and people who were needing some kind of assurance that in the face of all this, they were going to make it. They weren't going to cave in, but, but instead God would was going to give them strength and sustain them in these hard times. Of course, we don't know what we're facing altogether in the days that are coming. And uh, we too need hope and encouragement uh, for these times. He wanted them to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God was on their side. No matter what uh, they were going to face, He wanted them to have the assurance that Jesus would be faithful to them. I remember one scripture that says, It is not to him that willeth, nor to him that runneth, but to God who shows mercy. Touches my heart. And so, <clears throat> Paul was endeavoring to get this message across to them when he wrote this letter. And I can't help but believe that the only way they could ever get it would be by revelation. Yes, sir. Even as you and I read this letter yes. 2,000 years hence, mm -hmm. it will be by revelation that we gather this in and appropriate it to our own hearts. And I believe that anything that uh, really moves us will come by revelation. We can hear something over and over. We can be preached to, and, and yet uh, the veil can remain over our eyes, and we just will not get it. That's right. But I hope that as uh, the pastors preach this series of sermons on Romans 8, that God will lift this veil, and we can come to a place of inner assurance yes. so that we'll know that, that God will not fail us. Right. Amen. And that whatever happens to us, we, we have the assurance that He is with us. Yes. Whether we can feel it or, or sense it, right. we can believe that God is with us. Man. I found something just before I came in. I found a quote, and it says, Human weakness is sustained by the Spirit's intercession. Of course, in Romans 8, it says that the Spirit of God maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Human weakness is sustained by the Spirit's intercession and by the knowledge of God's loving purpose. I believe that uh, if, if God can convince us that, that whatever happens to us, yeah. some wonderful way, because He's God and because He loves us, if He can help us see that there is a loving purpose behind what's happening to us, I believe He can take us through just about anything, if not anything, if we can see that. And I believe that it's one of the most difficult things for any of us to see. Yes, sir. Because instead of, of relying yes, upon Him, and instead of having faith in God, oftentimes we give in to the flesh mm -hmm. and to the devil. Mm -hmm. And we fail to believe mm -hmm. when we're going through difficult places. It's a great comfort to know that behind life's events, there's a loving God, God who cares for us. Yes, sir. Yet in order for us to see this, there must be divine revelation. All things work together for good to those who love God. 
Not one detail works ultimately for evil to the people of God. Not one detail works ultimately for the evil for you and me. Boy, that's good. What do you think of that? In the end, only good will be our lot. When it comes to the end of the way, if we've trusted Jesus, we will receive good. That's all. And even though you're going through hard places, and I know a lot of you are, uh, you're going through trials and trouble, uh, yet, in spite of it all, God is working for your benefit. Though not expressed in, in, this, in these two verses, the ruling thought is that in the sovereign love and wisdom of God, all these circumstances, or whatever we're going through, all these things are made to converge upon and contribute to the goal. And in verse 29, as Stephen pointed out a couple weeks ago in the study, the goal is that we might be conformed to the image of God's Son. And so God works it so that whatever comes to us comes at the right time. If we're doing the best, we know how. Yeah. What comes to us comes in order to help us. And remember that if you obey the Lord, you miss 70%. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You miss 70% of your of troubles, mm -hmm. of the things that would normally come your way. Uh, you miss it as you obey the Lord, and you only get 30%, and the 30% you get is what you need. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to have that. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord indeed. Sometimes the 30% seems more like the 70, doesn't it? Sure did to Job. Oh my. Yeah, Job had 30%, but I'll tell you. But that was God's plan for God's his plan life. God's plan for his life. Well, this is not a, an exhaustive sermon by any means, but... Maybe the Lord will help us in verse 29. He's already helped us. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. Foreknowledge is simply to know beforehand, yes. to know ahead of time. God knew before the, world's, or the world began who would respond to him. Yes, sir. And yet in this context, the Lord is not referring primarily to the ones who will, to, who will respond to him, but instead has in mind what he is going to do for them. In his foreknowledge, he knows that people will respond, but what he's trying to get across in his foreknowledge is that he's going to help us. God is telling us, I'm going to help you. I'm going to be with you. Foreknowledge to know beforehand. Knowledge that, that God has of His children responding to Him. He knows who will respond, but He wants us to know that He is going to help us. And uh, He's revealing His intentions for His people. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate. Predestined simply means that, that because God knew who was going to respond to Him, He has plans to work in their lives. Now, he's not, it's not, it doesn't mean that, that there isn't any response on our part. There has to be a response on our part. God has predestined those whom He foreknew. He predestined them to be conformed to the image of His Son, but... This works as we respond to Him and as we cooperate with Him. Because God knows all those who are going to respond to Him, He plans to work for them. But He works with them as they cooperate with Him. And this is very important. A man must obey the Lord. And as we obey God, then His grace and all the resources He has are available to us. Yeah. Predestined means that God is working on our behalf. That's what predestination is all about. God is working for you. Yes. He's on your side. Yes, sir. And I'll tell you that the more life becomes difficult for us in this country, and not only in this country, but anywhere all over this world, the more you and I will have to know this, that God is on our side. Yes. And He has predestined, through foreknowledge, He predestined 
to be on our side. And he wants you to know that. The devil often tells us that there isn't much hope for us. And uh, when trials come in upon us, sometimes it, we just seem so weak and uh, it's sort of dark. But God uh, is wanting to help us anyway. What we want to emphasize and what I want to emphasize, and I think that something the apostle was trying to emphasize is that God is for you and he is for me. Yes, sir. He's not against us. No. I've been in situations where it was like everything was against me. Sure. And you have too. I've been in situations where it was as though the devil was in control. Mm -hmm. And I had to fight like everything to believe that God was with me and mm -hmm. he was helping me. And as some of you may not have been in a trial like that, but you probably will be there if you're faithful to God. And by yeah. and by, you're going to find yourself in a grip you know, of some sort, and, and uh, you're going to have to really trust the Lord to help you. And it can be as though the devil is in control. But we know by God's grace that he is not. That God is on our side, Amen. and he wants to take us through. He's doing everything he can to bring us to His will and His purpose. And here is where I think we, we reach something that's very crucial. Paul is not concerned just that we find salvation. Yes, sir. Now this is what this is all about. Think of it. All these things working for good. We know that God causes all work things to work for good to them that love Him. But then it goes on in verse 29, for whom he did foreknow, these people, he, those whom uh, he knew would respond to him. Those whom he foreknew, he predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. And this, of course, has to do with a lot more than just finding Jesus and being yes. saved. Yes, sir. What he's interested in is that something happens to us, and that's called change. Mm -hmm. Yes. He's wanting us to change. He's wanting me to be different. He doesn't want me just to settle down someplace and say, well, I'm saved. But the, his, Paul's desire for these people is to know that God is with them. God's on their side. But also, the reason he's worked with them, the reason he predestined them, was yes. that they might become like Christ. Yes, sir. Might be more like him. Yes, sir. And uh, I want to... Uh, Point out a scripture to you. Pastor Dave pointed this out to me in the study. I was really thrilled with it in Ephesians 2. And it says, uh, Ephesians 2.10, if you want to flip over there with me. <clears throat> right quick and just read this with me. For we are his workmanship, mm -hmm. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. His plan was not only for you to be saved, but His plan was for you to be like Jesus and to be conformed in, into His likeness. And not just, a, not just an imitation. God doesn't want me just to try to imitate somebody or imitate something, but He actually wants me to participate. He wants me to be like Jesus and walk with Him and walk yes. in fellowship with Him. And if you'll turn to Jeremiah... Uh, I want to read you a little story in Jeremiah 18, mm. 1 through 6. Do you know what that is? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Anybody know what that is? It's, it's the lesson from the potter. <laughs> it says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel. Now you'll notice that uh, he didn't throw the, the clay away when he marred it. He didn't cast it aside. He just put it back on the wheel, start all over again. And he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter? Saith the Lord, Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. Mm -hmm. 
God wants us to change. And He wants us to be like Jesus. And He wants us to see that what happens to us is all for a purpose. Even though it may not look like it. We may not feel that it is. But He wants us to see that whatever comes our way is intended to conform us to the image of His Son. And He said to Israel, Well, Israel, can, I can do what I like. He can mar the pot or He can make it beautiful. But however He does it, you see, whatever He does is for our benefit, whether we can understand it or not. Right. And I think that, that uh, this is what, or at least to a measure, this is what Jesus is trying to get us to see. He simply, he simply wants us to be conformed to the image of Jesus. All these things working for good so that we might be conformed. 1 John 3.2 says something for us, and I don't know if any of you remember that, but 1 John 3.2 it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. I'm thankful that God uh, is faithful to you and me. And I hope that... Uh, before this little series of sermons is over, yes, sir. you'll have more confidence in God. Amen. Whoa, whoa.